96 exit, all dragon coins, all moons. Uh, that wasn't quite true. I'll get into why in a minute. Uh, everyone ready with time? Three, two, one, start. I'm mistaken, I'm joined by my best friend, Hupfen. Let me see. And this is Mario? This is Mario. He couldn't be on the couch today. Unfortunately, he has to run through dinosaur land. In level one here, we have, we'll be introduced to our other partner, Yoshi. Yoshi's pretty cool. And we're gonna keep Yoshi throughout as much of the run as we can, more or less. Uh, it's gonna help us collect the dragon coins. That's a dragon coin right there. It's got Yoshi's face on it, therefore proving that Yoshi is a dragon. Mm -hmm. It's just science. And he's gone. Bye, Yoshi. Like we said, keeping Yoshi as much as we need it. <laughs> yes, as much as, as they're needed. I think there's a total of four Yoshis throughout the run. Um, mm -hmm. Each progressively we keep for longer. That one we keep for less than a stage, the next one we keep for about basically a stage. This level exemplifies one of the things that I like most about Lunar Dragon, which is that it takes us into areas that other categories don't really take us. Who knew this pipe was there? No speedrunner knows this pipe is here. But it has a coin, so... We got to visit. So we have to go there. These brown platforms you see me running across, they move left to right. And it actually is a little bit faster to spend as much time on them as possible. Since they also move Mario from left to right faster than if he was just running. Up next, we have Island 4, Yoshi's Island 4. This is our introduction to water. Water is slow. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna spend as much time as we can outside of the water. Preferably not even touching it in this level. Sadly, there will be other levels where we're forced to touch the water uh, substantially. <laughs> like the underwater levels. Yes, there are underwater levels that unfortunately we cannot skip. Next up, our first castle, it's Iggy's castle. I, throughout the routing earlier, we just are kind of forced to have this mushroom because of the midways. And I'm gonna try and use this to de-boost, to skip a bit of a section here. That jump to get past that Koopa is really tight. And now, with that, I don't really have to worry about the fireball as much. Here's our first auto-scroller. You could probably fit a couple donations in if we have any. So I would like to mention that we have passed the halfway mark for Super Ryu World 2 100%. Now, a, a bit of a question out there for the audience. How many of you were at or watched SGDQ? So if you were at SGDQ or you watched it, I, w I was there, in fact. Um, I noticed that we raised like a million dollars in like an hour. So if we can do that, then I know we can raise $5,000 in like an hour, 45 minutes for Super Ryu World 2, 100%. I know you guys have it in you. I watched, uh, I watched that run on the flight out here, and it is incredible. It has one of my favorite levels that I've seen in a ROM hack. So it's definitely worth seeing. Anyway, that was Castle 1. That was Castle 1. Every SMW speedrunner's kind of shaking their head at the strat that I use at the end of Iggy because <laughs> it's a very safe strat that loses, like, a couple of frames to optimal. But come on. <laughs> Donut Plains 1, our next level, is going to introduce the most important mechanic for this run, and possibly for Super Mario World in general, and that is the cape. I need to keep this cape throughout pretty much the entirety of this run. Anytime I get hit, I have to go grab one, essentially. Um, when we fly like this, so, when you run forward in Super Mario World, Mario's speed fluctuates between four values. When you fly like this, it just stays at one value. So your goal, when you're flying, is to get to that highest value and just stay there. That is obviously pretty difficult because there's no indication of what that is, except <laughs> for 
how fast the screen is going. So that's usually pretty tough. For underwater sections like this, I always hold down and mash A and B, the two jump buttons. That allows me to really have more finesse over Mario's height. Whereas if I wasn't holding down, he would just kind of go flying upwards. Anytime we're in an underwater level, we're going to be trying our best to hold an item. If we're holding an item, Mario just swims super fast. Why it speeds him up, I don't know. But we're going to hold this P-switch till the end because of that. And of course, what we passed a moment ago was one of the secret exits. We'll be coming back to this level because 96 exit, we got to do them all. Right, so basically, people hear 96 exit and a lot of times they think this game has 96 levels. It doesn't. I forgot to look up how many levels it does have. <laughs> I think it's 74. We'll go with that. In lieu of any other information, we'll say it's 74. <laughs> um, but it does have 96 exits. So uh, some levels, any level that's red on the overworld map will have two exits. Usually one of them is a key exit. Our second time through, we're going to get that key exit. And since we already collected the coins, we don't have to worry about those the second time. Yeah, once you collect the, uh, the coins on a level, when you return, they've all despawned. They're gone. They're gone. It makes, uh, oh. All right, so the thing we talked about earlier. <laughs> I'm going to make a quick trip back to Donut Plains 1 to grab a cape so that we can continue. Mm -hmm. That happens sometimes, you just get clipped. Luckily, there is the, the Koopa at the start of this level just has a cape, always. Yeah, a big part of routing when you're learning this game is remembering where all those backup capes are so you can get to one really quickly and keep going. I learned about one recently. I've run this game for like five years. <laughs> so here we're going to use another mechanic of cape called damage boosting. Basically, if we fly into something, like with a normal flight, instead of taking damage, it just kills our flight momentum and sends us to the ground faster. Using that, we can boost through pretty much enemies that we can't normally go around. This is Big Boo. He's pretty cool. He's got two little buddies. And no hitbox. And no hitbox. In fact, if I can... No oh, hitbox. His buddies have a hitbox, though. Don't get hit by them. Big Boo himself, not too scary. More bark than bite, in fact. Yo, I got the kick. Nice. The other mechanic in... Uh, Donut Ghost House or Donut Secret House, that's really important is the Boo Rings themselves. Um, once, when a Boo Ring comes on screen, it takes the position of the last Boo Ring that left the screen. So, for example, you'll see that this Boo Ring is in a completely different position than it was the first time I came in here. That's because it's taking the position of the Boo Ring from the second screen, which is the last one. So, ooh. Ooh. You don't usually get that. Usually you de-boost there like we did earlier. So, let me think. Since that went that way, I'm pretty sure the next booring we get should be pretty safe. But if something happens there, say you get hit and you have to kind of improvise your way through, you're out of luck for the rest of the run in terms of where the boorings are going to be. It's going to be total guess. This level teaches us how to do really precise spin flights. Okay. Spin flight is not as fast as a normal flight where we cape back like that because of what we talked about earlier about holding forward, but it is more precise. So you wouldn't be able to just fly and dive bomb to get all those coins but you can use spin flight. I'm gonna do something very similar in this level. This is also going to have a lot of running along platforms like we had back in Donut Plains 3. Or not Donut Plains 3, Yoshi's Island 3. I 
level's always a little stressful. <laughs> Donut Plains 4 has... What does Donut Plains 4 have? Oh, it's got... Uh, Oh, Donald Plains 4 has our first moon. That's what I forgot. Yeah. This is Lunar Dragon. This is Lunar Dragon. We do have to pick that up, actually. I've done this uh, I've done this run for so long, I forget what's in each level. <laughs> I just have everything memorized in terms of, like, inputs. Yeah, I jumped way too early. There's a strat to maintain uh, flight through here, which is something I'll explain a bit later. But I didn't quite get it. Uh-oh. That was sketchy. Yeah. That's our first moon. You get three lives when you pick it up. Fourteen. <laughs> Something I failed to mention earlier. Uh, you get a lot of lives running Lunar Dragon. A lot. A lot. And I do plan to donate after the run. I'm going to donate a dollar for every life that I have at the end of the run. Yeah, same here. If you're... Trying to get his speed there is really tough. So you may think to yourself, man, Cape's really cool about going left to right. How's Cape about going vertical? It's still really good. I'm going to use this springboard at the end to get to the door a little bit quicker. And, of course, switching over to Fire Flower for faster kill. And you're done. <laughs> Anyone who's played this casually is like, how did you, hit, how did you just beat him in one hit? Uh, basically, when you jump on an, uh, a boss in this game, or certain bosses, um, it just checks to see if it's been hit twice before, and it doesn't check to see if those hits were fireballs or if those hits were jumps. So you can... Exploit it by doing a couple of fireballs and just jumping on them. That's the only thing we use Fire Flower for in this entire <laughs> run. <laughs> is three bosses, I think. Yeah, I think it's... But it is a considerable time save, especially like with Ludwig. Oh, Ludwig's fight is a nightmare yeah. for Fire Flower. <laughs> oh, God. Vanilla Dome 1 has the most ridiculous strat in the world. That makes me wish I had like a hand cam. Oh, that didn't work. Let's see. So, second room here is going to be pretty basic. I'm going to try and do... I'm going to try and stick to the ceiling. Yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, for the, for the third room... For the third room, I have to switch to an overhand position with my hand, and I have one finger on each of the four face buttons so that I can jump through this gap, grab that, and then mash both jump buttons to get out quickly. It's the only fast way I figured out through there. Oh, I didn't do it. There's like a really tight way to like duck and fly at the same time, but didn't quite get it. I didn't even mention that I got parade. I was too busy thinking about uh, Vanilla Dome 2. So Dome 2 introduced... Uh, so Mario World has P-Speed the same way that Mario 3 does. The only way... Except there's, it's obviously not on screen. You can't see whether or not you have P-Speed. The only way to be able to tell is when Mario throws his hands out and does a Naruto run. The reason that that's relevant to this level is his P speed does not go down while he's in the water or climbing a vine. So that part earlier where I jumped off the vine and I got speed super quickly, normally you can't get speed there. The only reason I was able to do that is because I built speed before I jumped into the water at the very beginning. I'll call it out again at the start of the, the second exit to see what we're talking to see if you can see it. Oh. That. <laughs> oh, still got it. That's one. <laughs> yup. <laughs> so 
So that's every Switch Palace. We're going to try and tape to the, to the Switch itself because it's faster. And we're going to try to get a Yump, which is a one frame uh, leniency jump off of the, the Switch. Which is not faster, but it is cooler. No, it's faster. <laughs> so yeah, right out. Cooler. I might have wasted too much time there. No, I didn't. Okay. Second time through, we actually gonna. Let me see. Ooh, we're gonna get hit. That's what we're Oop. gonna do. Let me actually. Well, mm. Nah, let's 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 be safe. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up a backup cave here. Fire flowers just despawn all the time. Okay. So here I'm gonna scroll the screen to the right. That's gonna cause this charging chuck, chuck to spawn sooner and destroy all these bricks sooner. It's also gonna cause the bats at the very end of the level to spawn sooner. And normally they'll hit me out of my flight really easily, but with the screen scrolled like this, it's not too bad. So Ghost House coming up here is where the fruits of our labor earlier with the Boo Rings comes out. I should be able to de-boost and then spin fly if I did that other Ghost House correctly. And they were lined up exactly how I wanted. I love that strat. I go between the gap and then hug the the right piece of ground, and that just lines me up perfectly to dive bomb to get the last coin. <laughs> Be careful that piece switch. <laughs> If you hit. <laughs> I've never lost a run to hitting the P-switch before reaching the coins. <laughs> of course not. Let's see. Dome 3. Dome 3 is going to be our second Yoshi. It's also going to be... I think I got it. I'm going to try and build P-speed here by sliding down. Why did I, oh. that? I knew that wasn't going to work. It's very close, though. Chat, you believed it'd be too hard. <laughs> oh. So there's actually a backup strat for this part. Just hug that, and then you're pretty, it's pretty much free at that point. But this time, let's bounce off him. <laughs> the one I was supposed to bounce off originally. There's our second moon. There's more de-boosting to get past those guys. I'm trying to think if there's a cape in this level. I think there is. There's a Yoshi. There's always a Yoshi. There's always a Yoshi. Ah, oh, I lost P-Speed. All right. Uh, raft of Shame. <laughs> Hopefully the only Raft of Shame we have to deal with during this run. That was a pretty ugly dome through or dome three, yeah. But it happens. <laughs> dome three is one of the hardest levels in the entire game. Or the entire run. And it's followed by one of the hardest tricks in the entire run. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can get this. After I go through this pipe, there's going to be another raft that we're going to try and skip. And we're going to use Yoshi to try and do that. Oh, 
Oh. Hmm. Sorry, Yoshi. Whew. So I had to go for the backup. You can actually get underneath that with full speed. And it's so fast, it looks ridiculous. But in lieu of that, we still have the, the older Yoshi skip, which still works. Mm -hmm. At the start of this level, I need to spin, spin my cape a bit. If you just run to the right out the gate, Magic Koopa gets in front of you 100% of the time. He'll still sometimes get in your way, but most of the time he won't. This section's just basically an auto-scroller, so if you have any donations, you can go right ahead. And I've just been informed that the donation incentive is pronounced Super Ryu World 2. Games done quick requests that you put all of your donations towards the Super Ryu World to 100% incentive, and not towards Super Ryu World because we do not have an incentive for that. Games done quick apologizes for the confusion. We have $30 from Mark Magus. Never give me the cape. Just don't do it. It's a bad idea. Just don't give me cape, dude. We have $50 from Mental Frost. He just says Super Ryu World. <laughs> so this is Lemmy? I always get Lemmy and Larry mixed up. Is it gonna be oh, all three? Now, I'm, now all I'm, three. I'm not sure. <laughs> all three. Come on. Oh, I didn't do it. Um, this fight's pretty basic. Just look for him. That's all you can really do. Uh, if he goes into the smaller pipes, his feet will peek out the bottom for like a frame, and you can catch him that way. But it, I don't think he does it on the taller pipes. At the very least, I never seem to see it. Next level, we just cape over it, so if you want to... <laughs> <laughs> the floor is yours. I got plenty of donations while you're flying. We have $25 from Isav Alberto, who says, Got to see Super Ryu World 2. We have $20 from Rock Band Man. <laughs> Mistaken, don't forget to look away during Forest of Illusion Secret, or else you might get dizzy. Just a tip. That is actually a genuine earnest tip when we get to that. It is. For, yeah. for everybody. I'll mention it, don't worry. <laughs> we have $30 from Verxel. This is such a cool category. So, at what point of this run do you meet Fusoya? <laughs> a good question. That's a great joke, by the way. <laughs> but that is a good question. I don't have a great comeback. I'll, I'm going to think of a comeback uh, later. Well, while you think of that, we have $50 from Skeletal Moth donating for the Super Ryu World Incentive. This is for you, Mark. So with that, I know, I know you folks are all heartbroken about the last Yoshi. I am too. So we're going to pick up Yoshi again this level. And I promise it's going to last a little bit longer than the last one. I'm going to need to get that coin first, though. Oh, this uh, level also has... So in this level, there are pink berries after this Yoshi point. I want to avoid eating two of them. There's the other one. If I eat the second one, he'll uh, poop out a cloud. And I don't want that. It takes nobody, forever. Nobody wants that. It stops the whole, it stops the whole game just like when egg, uh, Yoshi hatches out of his egg. So it's just pure time loss. And I don't need the coins that it's going to give me. I already got 25 lives. Yeah. I don't need more than that. Or do I? You, no. No? Well, we're going to get 26 after this level. Fine. Bye, Yoshi. Sorry, Yoshi. That Yoshi, he just ends up in Soda Lake, though. He's not... Yeah, it's fine. It's not like the last Yoshi that we dropped in lava. That, that Yoshi is... is it, yeah, salute. It's unfortunate. <laughs> Dip under that, get the moon, and a secret exit. This is the exit that 
people never remember it existed. I know people who years later were like, I just found a new exit. And I'm like, was it Soda Lake? And they're like, yes, it was. Of course it was. So this is another underwater level. It doesn't have any items that we can carry. So we just have to swim forward, hold down. This is the only level with Torpedo Teds, I believe. I think so. And they're not too bad. They can get in your way sometimes. One thing that's cool about this level strats is that we actually go underneath the, uh, the ground here. Because the space between the ground and the kill box is actually pretty big. And then at the end, I'm going to stall a quick second. That'll send all these torpedo tads to the left. If I just keep going straight, they'll shoot right, and then they block the pipe anyway. So it's better to just stall for a second. After that, we're going through Star World. Star World has one level with coins and 10 exits. So. Not a whole lot going on, but this first level is the hardest level in the run. I know I've said that already, but it, it actually is. We did it. I know it sounds like I'm joking, <laughs> but there's a possibility if Lakitu throws a spiny and Yoshi eats that spiny at the same frame that the gold tape spawns, Yoshi eats the gold tape. Yeah. And then you can't beat the level. It becomes impossible to finish that exit. And it, therefore, is the hardest level in the game. Mm -hmm. I had it happen in practice earlier. I've had it happen in runs. <laughs> My submission run for GDQX is actually it happens in that run. <laughs> uh, so here I'm just flying with Yoshi. This is a glitch, technically, I think, where if you fly into an item, Yep, Mario will pick him up, and you can keep flying. I do it because it's fun. Uh, if you have some more donation comments, you're free to go until I get to Star World 1. I got lots more donation comments. I've got $10 from Ghost Kumo, Lunar Dragon, Mario. What kind of rock band DLC did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> Much love and best of luck to Miss Dokken. Cool to see you running at GDQX after briefly meeting you last year at GDQX. Let's get that 10k. And just checking in on the Super Ryu World 2 incentive, we are over $6,200. We have under $4,000 to go on that one. I believe in all of you. And I believe in you too. We have $10 from Shredberg, no comment. So let's take this time to say we're very close to getting the Super Rear World 2 donation incentive, <laughs> so let's get in those donations, even if they have no comment, just like this one. Thanks for that comment, Shredberg. I agree. Quick note here. To get P-Speed here, I have to jump. It'll make sense later. Mm. And I'm escaping, so you're free. <laughs> oh. huh? We're taking the long way, fam. <laughs> I can just get speed there again. <laughs> Nor I, normally, you're trying to keep over I appreciate a lot that. more, but. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, Star World 1. We uh, utilize a technique here known as Smash Ola. Uh, Lunar Dragon is a glitchless category, and by, and by that we mean glitchless, not glitch none. So we're just going to do zip, uh, zip right through these blocks real quick. And this works because you can only have four of those spinning blocks actually spinning at any given time. And as you're going down through this, you can hit a lot more than four at the same time. And that just kind of pushes Mario through. Yeah, essentially... After you hit a fifth block, the fifth one starts spinning and the first one stops spinning. And if Mario's inside that first block, it pushes him out. And then if it pushes him into another block, that one starts spinning. And then the second one stops, and then it just chain reaction all the way down. Let's 
Same deal here. Ooh, 290 is not bad. Nice. So here we're going to pick up a blue Yoshi. Blue Yoshi child. We're going to need this blue Yoshi later on. Although the first time through, we're just going to uh, get the secret exit. Make sure to spin in time with the music. It, if you don't spin in time with the music, are you even speedrunning? And you may have noticed I picked up that mushroom. I don't actually want that mushroom. That mushroom's for Yoshi. Gotta concentrate. You want this Yoshi to grow big and strong. So yeah, uh... <laughs> if you feed a Yoshi an item, he immediately becomes big Yoshi. The reason that I pick up the mushroom and I don't just feed him the cape is that the mushroom falls faster. So it's easier to just feed him that. Remember when I mentioned earlier that I have to jump? Specifically at the very beginning of this. Yoshi just means I don't have to jump. I was supposed to grab that shell. <laughs> Where are we gonna be? Uh, oh, I can grab this guy. We got time for a donation? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Hi. All right, we have $25 from Jack Corsair. That's a nice incentive you've got there. Would be pretty cool if the community were to meet it. So Special World, Special World has a lot of extremely hard strategies. Uh, thankfully, it starts with Gnarly, an extremely easy level. It's like the calm before the storm. Those three coins are like when you submit a paper and it just meets word count. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's got five coins. Up next is Tubular, a level that tanks a lot of casual player, uh, casual playthroughs. You're usually supposed to use a pea balloon, which is really slow, which is why we try and get through it with Yoshi instead. You'll notice I'm gonna skip a coin here at the beginning. I'm gonna explain that in a little bit. There's four, there's five. So I skipped that coin earlier uh, because this level has six coins. And in a level with six coins, you only have to collect five. Uh, that's just part of the rules because after you collect five, if you re-enter, that sixth coin will be despawned anyway. Oh, I actually got it. Yeah, that, that is the one exception to when we say you collect all dragon coins. Like, uh, not the really. The one exception? <laughs> We've got another big exception. We've got another, later. okay. <laughs> so that strat at the beginning where I picked up that first coin is really tough. Uh, it's pretty finicky, and I'm pretty happy to get it. It skips having, so the, the world record actually skips that coin. And because it's just so sketchy. But it saves time in the auto scroller. Because you spend less time collecting coins there. Sometimes a fish gets really close there and it kind of stresses me out. They seem to cooperate. Uh, what's gonna say? Oh yeah, that that section where we collected the last two coins in the last level. Uh, that is just an auto scroller that you get whenever you get Yoshi wings, and it has four coins in it. 
And it's the same screen no matter what level you get Yoshi Wings in. This is the title screen level. Got time for another donation? Uh, sure. Uh, yes. That was a bit hesitant. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay. We have $20 from Andy A. Yoshi is a tool to be used oh. and discarded, <laughs> but his coins are precious, and we can't leave a single one behind. Looking forward to Super Ryu World 2. Let's meet that incentive. I was hesitant because I was thinking of what level was coming up next. <laughs> Mondo, which is another level that has half water. Unfortunately, we start in the water. Uh, we can't avoid the water this time. If I land on the, with the left side of that platform, I can usually get P-Speed pretty easy. Oh, we're going to hijack that so we can get over this pipe. And now I'm going to get P-Speed, spin fly into this pipe, and then if I jump immediately coming out of it, I'll be able to fly even though I don't have P-Speed yet. That's another area that you basically only see in Lunar Dragon. That's done a lot in 96 Exit, too. Oh, it is? Oh, wait, no, you're right. That area, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of the strat. Oh, what's up? Oh. <laughs> get out of here. He didn't like me hopping, in his, <laughs> hopping on his raft there. Uh, up next is, I think, the hardest level in Special World. One of the hardest in the run. Uh, appropriately titled Outrageous. So hopefully I can get this first try. quite get it. Uh, um, yeah. I might. I think I'm just gonna take the death and try again. <laughs> trying to trying to run through after is really tough. You'll know you'll see when I actually get through there that there's a really tall pipe that just blocks your movement forever. And I needed to collect all those coins while also uh, getting over that pipe. That's just going back in the cape again. Yeah. Let's see. I had a good start to that, though. I think I just dropped too late. <laughs> I don't know how I lost P-Speed there. That was weird. That's never happened before. All right. <laughs> this next level uh, is all about clouds. I struggled for so long to come up with visual cues for where to be in this level because it's so long. And I eventually settled on clouds. I'm gonna fly up to this cloud and then drop. Oh, usually I can keep P speed while grabbing that, but at least I didn't die. Wait till the third cloud goes off screen and then drop. Drop to that lower cloud after reaching full height, and then drop when I meet this cloud. And then just cape to the end and become the super player that Nintendo always thought I could be. Uh, there's so much stuff in this next level. <laughs> I'm going to stall a little bit at the start to be sure I kill this Koopa. If you just run straight, he just barrels into you, even if you're spinning. Ooh, that's clean. I'm going to try and thread the needle in between these to... Ah, 
didn't quite get it. You saw the idea, though. That was the wrong, that was the wrong jump. <laughs> All right. So much like... Much like the last Switch Palace, this one we're just gonna cape into. Uh, try and keep cape, try and get a Switch Jump. Pretty normal. Got time for a donation comment if you got one. I got one, it's $25 from Mr. Wellett. Thank you, Ms. Stockin, for revealing the moon's locations. And finding every Dragon Coins is so satisfying. And please, donate for every Yoshi you threw away. Aw, oh, I didn't Aww. get it. Um, yeah, I've I have run this category quite a few times that people have told me there's moons in this game. And I was like, yes. Mm -hmm. There's seven. There's seven? So after you beat Special World, the game dumps you back at the beginning, changes the graphics around a bit, becomes like Halloween themed. Mm -hmm. That's why the Koopas have Mario masks and the piranha plants become pumpkins. We use that in the route as an opportunity to clean up the levels that we skipped the first time through. And this time I'm going to be collecting the coins through this level. Because of that dive bomb strat, I'm actually going to collect one of these coins off screen. Oh. I usually don't have that much speed coming off that. After this is Donut Plains 2. <laughs> if you have a backup of donation comments, now is your opportunity. <laughs> we got a bit. We've got time. Well, that's great. Um, I'm just going to first check in on, of course, Super Ryu World 2 100%, which will be run possibly after this, assuming we meet the incentive by Ryu Car. I'm assuming that's pronounced the same. Uh, but you really only have about an hour to get that $3,500 and we have left to meet that incentive. And again, if we don't meet that incentive, that Super Real World 2 run ain't happening. We're just going straight to Cadence of Hyrule. And again, I know there's Mario fans out there somewhere. I'm sure you guys all want to see more of this. So yeah, get your donations in within that next hour. That's all the time you got. We have an anonymous $100 donation. Let's get that bonus run met. Yeah. Woo I agree. indeed. <laughs> we have $50 from Hugh Man Being. This 100% human meat baby thinks that all donations should go for Super Ryu World. We are not a swarm of bees in a human suit at all. But donate for Super Ryu World, or you may be visited by a swarm of angry bees. That person seems trustworthy. Yeah. And they're, they're definitely not a swarm of bees in a human suit. I mean, that was directly stated. Yeah. Yeah, it says it right there, right in the comment. Up next, we have Green Switch Palace. Stop me if you've heard this one. We're going to try and maintain cape through the pipe, and then we're going to try and get a switch jump. I feel like I've heard this one before. Brand new. Oh, man. I got everyone excited by getting the first one. Aww. <laughs> and we're heading back into the auto scroller in case you thought we'd escaped it. This is actually the longest level in the game. It's longer than the Bowser fight, including the level that we do to get to the Bowser fight. So, again, if you've got donation comments, you're free. We have. $200 from JD. Thank you for everything you're doing for those in need. We have $10 from Salamantis. Thank you for doing that. You guys are awesome, as always. And then a heart. Aww. We have $25 from Wef Jebster. Oh, baby, get the moon dinos with the quickness. Congrats <laughs> and good luck, yo. Thanks, Jeff. We have $96 from Miria. $1 for each level. I, I mean, exit. 
We have $25 from C Note 271. Sorry, Yoshi. There is a reason dinosaur and dragons are extinct. <laughs> Harsh. But fair. But fair. I don't see a Yoshi there right now. That's true. We have an anonymous $100 donation. No comment. So, of course, I'm going to mention Super Ryu World 2 100%. It's implied. It's, it's implied. I'm also going to mention after this $100 donation from Man Bear Paradox because there's no comment there either. Super Ryu World... Super Ryu World... My goodness. Super <laughs> Ryu World 2 100%. <laughs> we have $20 from Ninja Deluxe. Thank you for being awesome. I told my chat I wasn't going to die doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we have $30 from Jinjanina84. Good luck to all the runners. The pause was just so I could make sure I could pronounce her name. Not an easy one. We've escaped Donut Plans 2. We never have to do it again. Next up is Donut Ghost House. It's got one of the sneakiest secrets. A secret, the only secret that I think you actually need cape to get to. Because I believe no cape is 95 exit because you can't get this one. Oops. And you can't take Yoshi in here to cheat it. This takes you to top secret, a level we won't go into because it doesn't have an exit. It's just there as like a bonus to collect uh, if you want to get a Yoshi or a cape or something like that. Very handy to find casually. Oh, for but sure. No real need here. The normal exit for this level is basically a puzzle. It's like the, uh, the newer Mario games where the ghosts ha ghost houses have like duplicate rooms and you have to figure out where you are. Uh, I've always been bad at puzzles, so I just use the cheat sheet. It's an easy solution. As long as you have cape. If you have cape, yes. Again, cape, very powerful. Uh, I do have to pick up a fire flower in this next level. We're going to use that to... Uh, we're going to use that in the Ludwig fight coming up. Thankfully, it's just right there. Super easy to get to. Vanilla Secret is a vertical level, much like Morton's Castle. So we use a lot of the same techniques we use there to beat it quickly. JK. The optimal strat is actually to grab uh, one of the Koopas from the beginning so that he doesn't do that. <laughs> but I always get hit when I try and do that, so I was hoping he would just play along, and he didn't. I have to make sure to hug the right wall there to get enough P-speed to fly up that part. And then the springboard coming up is really tense because I have to jump through that gap without really being able to see it. Ooh. We're fine. You actually can do a, a cape uh, pipe fly through there. It's just really hard because you, if you do it in the wrong way, you'll end up like landing and losing all your momentum. Mm -hmm. This level's cool because it has a bunch of full flights in it where we just hold jump and forward, and that's it. This is the first one. The second one is through the midpoint. And 
And then the last one is immediately after, which takes us to the sub area. Eventually. <laughs> Pipes are hard. <laughs> Pipes are hard, doors are more difficult, somehow. We haven't been trolled by very many doors so far. Pipes are hard. <laughs> Next level has a whole bunch of friends in it. It is, I think, the only level with dolphins. I've played so many ROM hacks that I just think they're <laughs> in every level. But unlike ROM hacks, these are normal dolphins, not ones coming out of lava or otherwise causing you a fuss. I mean, we don't use them. No, we but... completely <laughs> avoid the dolphins. They're not here to kill you. They're minding their own business, and we're we're cool with that. Mm -hmm. Up next is our first fortress. The only thing really special about it is that well, it'll be the first time that we fight Resner in the run. But other than that, it's an underwater level, so we've got tons of time. If you'd like to read some donations. I would like to read some donations. I would also like to check in on Super Real World 2 100%, of course. We are past the $7,000 mark. We are at $7,174. Again, we are really coming up on when we need to get that incentive met in order to insert that run for bonus game one. We have an anonymous $10 donation. Thank you, GDQ, for being there for me while I have the back-to-school plague. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Let's get the Super Ryu World incentive met. We have $10 from Zaki. Get that Ryu run. Uh oh. I was supposed to jump through the middle there and I didn't. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Reznor or Bui Bui playing the Japanese version. Um, up next is another auto-scroller. We know how much you liked <laughs> Donut Plains 2, so I introduce mm. you Butterbridge 1. <laughs> and I've got pretty much nothing for this level. <laughs> I'm just going to cape in the top left corner. Well, I got some. It's an almost $50 donation that says Super Ryu World. I also have a $25 donation from Play It Bogart, which says World 2 Ryu Super. We have a $100 donation from Team Richards. No comment. Uh, any guess what I'm going to talk about next? I think it might be Super Ryu World. You got it! I'm going to talk about Super Ryu World 2, <laughs> which is the bonus game coming up after this, but only if we meet that $10,000 incentive. Yeah. Sorry, I hope Finn's wallet. <laughs> <laughs> we have $50 from Genobius. Run, Mario, run. Love the run, kill the animals. Or the Yoshis, I guess. I think only the one Yoshi dies. <laughs> like I said, the one falls in the Soda Lake. That one falls right in the lava, though. Yeah. Well, to be fair, we haven't seen any bodies. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> We have $100 from Chris178. Hey, Katie and JD. Hope you hear this. I'm super glad you guys decided to donate. Love you both. And I'd be even more super glad if you decided to donate towards our Super Rio World 2 100% run coming up after this is a bonus, but only if that incentive's met. So Butterbridge, Butterbridge 2, the next level, has my favorite strat. Maybe not my favorite. One of my favorites. It's you can never strat. pick a favorite. It's a good strat, though. Where we're going to try and maintain pipe, or maintain flight through, that's an old strat, through a uh, vertical pipe. Where are they? Oh, there it is. 
It's like, where are the red Koopas? No, oh, I didn't get oh. forward momentum. So if I could have tapped forward before I landed there, then I could have gotten forward momentum and just flown and skipped this entire section. It's really cool, but you have a tight uh, timing window to actually tap forward there. Full jump through that coin guarantees you that. Uh, that Yoshi coin. Staircase didn't play along, though. This whole level didn't play along. Yeah. I blame it on the fact that I did an old strat at the start. That was like a 2017 strat. <laughs> this castle is something else. Room 2 has like five or ten different strategies. I finally settled on this one, and even this one I'm not super happy with. Ooh. Yeah, I was worried. So you have to run a thin line there between uh, caping underneath the fireballs and not landing. Because if you mm. land and don't jump, you're just going to go straight into lava. So I was trying to just bail, and I bailed a little too much. Luckily, there's a cape right here. This room is also a nightmare, as if the last room wasn't bad enough, because I can never figure out where these Koopas are going to be. Ooh, I need that, actually. <laughs> oh, I missed him. It's okay, though. We're back on track. There goes Ludwig. And after Force of Illusion, I don't have to worry about the Fire Flower anymore. You just have to worry about Forest of Illusion. We don't need to talk about Forest of Illusion. We need to talk about Forest of Illusion, considering it's next. We don't need to talk about Forest of Illusion. <laughs> I used to run a different route, which does Forest of Illusion much sooner, because it's so frustratingly hard. <laughs> and so, so likely for something to go wrong. But I opted for this route instead, because it's actually safer, and actually might be faster. <laughs> Plus, you know, we're getting into October. You'll want the Halloween theme. I think it's seasonal. Fine. <laughs> uh, this first level, we're just caping over it. The only thing to it is that I need to be sure to get above the screen quickly to avoid hitting a note block. Or a music block, rather. <laughs> Hey. Ghost House, Forest Ghost House is next. Room two in Forest Ghost House is actually pretty intense, so instead of keeping my Fire Flower, I'm actually going to switch to a backup cave. Mario just likes to fly. Yeah. So it's the the booze up top there that are the main culprit. Yeah, stuff like that can happen. Okay. That's why we pick it up. And then Forest 1, very similar to Forest 1 the first time, just cape over it. Forest 2 is where things are going to get pretty intense. So if you've got any more donation comments, you're free to go. All right. We have $10 from Jay Rado. Leave no incentive behind. We have a $96 anonymous donation. Super Ryu World. Hadouken! We have $50 from Zadok. What? GDQ goodness in September? Sweet. Also, let's get Ryu car out there. We have an anonymous $30 donation, an anonymous $20 donation, and a $50 donation from Crosschop114254. And those have no comments, so guess what I'm going to talk about? Is this a real world? 
It's Super Ryu World too, 100%. We are actually more than three quarters of the way there, so we don't have that much more to go. Um, but this run's got about 45 minutes based on your estimate, so not a lot of time left. Yeah, only about three more worlds. So this level is the most complicated, I think. I actually have to do a lot of carrying items, per these purple blocks specifically, and I have to be careful of what I kill because I'm trying to not get hit like that, but whatever. I'm um, trying to despawn urchins in certain positions. So normally there's an urchin right here, but he's gone, thankfully. Getting hit there's actually not a big deal because I, I need to get backup capes anyway. So now I just have to be careful not to die to the Rip Van Fish here at the end. So, normally I would have cape at this point. Mm. And this blue switch has a completely different strat from the other switches. We try and cape through the pipe, and then we try and get a switch jump. Completely different. Completely different. But I don't have cape, so we're just going to get switch jump. <laughs> Book ended. I'll take it 50%. That's a passing grade. <laughs> that was, I thought for sure you were going to call me out on that. You just, <laughs> you just sat there. I, I, I decided to be befuddled. Fair. So this is why it's not a big deal. I can just collect that, start select, and then head back in. Second time through this, we actually have to collect the coins. So I drop that so that I can pick it back up again and head to the right. Oh, I need you. There's going to be a fish. And then this urchin's gonna get in my way on the way back. To prevent that, I'm going to bonk my head and then scroll right. That should put enough stuff on screen that he despawns. And because I didn't kill a bunch of fishes earlier, the urchin we despawned earlier is still gone. I promise there's an urchin there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Very nice. If you don't get that block the second time, you do not have enough time to skip that cycle. And even if you do grab it, it is pretty tight. It's rough. <laughs> I'm glad to not have to do Forest of Illusion 2 again. Mm -hmm. It's a very stressful level. Force 3 is another spin flight level. At the end, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to grab one of the bombs out of the bubbles. Ooh. The reason is, once I carry that bomb over the goal tape, it will transform into a It's just the fastest way to get another cape without having to do some complicated routing. Mm -hmm. Or go back to Forest Evolution 2. Which we don't want to do. No. Forest Ghost House will look pretty similar to what we did last time. Except we're just going to disregard walls. What are walls, really? I guess maybe it's ceilings. But just like old school Mario Maker level, you just cave over to the top of this. That's where every uh, expert level got at the idea from. Yeah. Mario World. Right. 
Forest 4. I'm just keeping to the secret exit if you've got a couple donations. I do have a couple donations. We have $100 from Tiggs129. This comment left intentionally blank to allow talk about Super Ryu World 2. So I'm going to talk about Super Ryu World 2 100%, which might be happening in about 40 minutes or so, but that's only if we can raise just a little bit over $2,000. That's right, we are fairly close to having that 8,000 out of that 10,000. I know you guys can do this. All right. I will cut you off real quick because this level is the level that has motion sickness in it. Yes. Um, if you are prone to that, I recommend not looking at the level for <laughs> the screen for a couple minutes. Uh, if you are not prone to it, I recommend looking directly at the background. Yeah, we don't know what's going on with the background either. <laughs> well, it's meant to create an illusion. So the way you're supposed to play that level is you're supposed to uh, hop on these platforms and then it's supposed to create an illusion that you're flying through the forest. But since we're also flying, the illusion is completely lost and like, it, it just gets awful. The crazy thing is you, if you go back to the beginning of the, the level and take flight again, it'll double in speed. Mm -hmm and get even worse. <laughs> this early bit's another auto-scroller that I just cape in, so if you've got a donation comment, you can go for it. That will be $25 from Bionic Ooh. Iguana. Oh. That's actually never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> you hear it here, folks. <laughs> Anyway, while I get back to caping, um, the donation comment on that was the people demand Ryu World. We can't live without the hot bearded action. Shout out to Beardsy, Snake, Cassie, Ghoulie, and the rest of the 502 crew. We have $25 from Andrew Ferguson. Shout outs to Hopfin on the couch. Hype to support Able Gamers, heart. We have $75 from AJ Heath. I hear you, ha I hear you have Super Ryu World. Um, well, you didn't hear correctly because we don't have it quite yet. We still have just over $2,000 to go on that incentive. Uh, so we might have it. I still believe in all of you. So at the start of the room, you may have noticed I was spinning a whole lot. Uh, that wasn't for fun. For whatever reason, yo, I just went through the fireball. Uh, <laughs> for whatever reason, if you're running forward and you mash the other run button, I think maybe because the game thinks Mario's facing a different direction at times, it will prevent the screen from scrolling for a little bit. And that lets you get over the fireballs that shoot up out of the lava. If you just run to the right, the fireballs shoot up and your timing window is super tight for getting that trick. For this, I need to pick up a backup, or not a backup cape, a uh, fire flower for Roy's castle. So the optimal route through here would basically take off and fly at this point, but I've had so much trouble setting up like visual cues for it that I just grab this P-switch and do it a little bit slower, but it's more consistent for me. And then we're gonna cape over a level, I know. Mm -hmm. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> and then we'll have Roy's castle. So if you've got, hit me with the donations. Hit me with the Ryu World. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hit you with some Ryu World. We have $50 from Zaraya. The donation is coming from inside the room. Also, insert something about Ryu World. We have an anonymous $10 donation. Hoping we can meet the incentive for Super Ryu World 2. We have $100 from Kadavis17. GDQX is already making this such a better weekend. Didn't know about Able Gamers. What a great cause. So this next level is pretty tense. I have to dive bomb to get the first coin. Bonk my head twice, and then dive bomb to get past some fireballs. It's pretty tight, and if I fail, I fall in the lava. Hmm. 
So what happened there? I went a little too early. Uh, I pulled back early, and I was further left than I wanted to be. Bad news, we're going back to Force Illusion 2. <laughs> I cursed it by saying that I never want to come back here. But it has that cape, and I need it. Yeah, so that time was much, much more evenly spaced out. There you go. And get through all those taps. What am I doing? <laughs> I only shot one fireball. His sunglasses distracted me. <laughs> it's too cool. Yeah, I was like, God, I want those sunglasses. But at that time, basically, I pulled back later. I had more time to... I didn't have to stall as long. They got me past the fireballs, which is cool. Why would he investigate? Why? Also, Here. who set it up? If he set it up, did he think he messed it up? Or did he Maybe. just find it? Mario is a plumber, not a demolitions expert. What is he you even handling that material in the first place? There are many questions to be asked. You wouldn't know it based on the cutscenes in this game. <laughs> this level has... Chocolate Island is a weird, weird world. It has a bunch of strange sub-areas, and this is the first of them. So this area has a sub-area that is identical to the original area. It's meant to create the illusion of you getting launched out of that pipe in the same place. But they're actually two separate areas. The reason I know that is because these coins in that moon don't exist in the original area. You have to go through the pipe to reach them. And I have to come back through the pipe to reach that coin. And then I grab the, the springboard there to turn it into a backup cape. We've finished all of our uh, fire flower bosses. So now it's just backup capes the whole way. Safety strats. For this, I'm going to cape above the level, believe it. Uh, but there's a fishing boo that I need to cape above and avoid. And there's an off-screen object that I have to cape below. So I'm past it now. Doors. Doors. That's a, I think that's the first door I've missed, though. My yeah. door ratio is not bad. Of course, it's the one that I tried to maintain cape, cape through. Of course. <laughs> it's the one that I missed, but whatever. Chocolate Island 2. For anyone who's never seen Chocolate Island 2, you're in for an adventure. I just want you... So this level has two exits. And I just want you to take a mental note of what these rooms look like. Remember this layout. There Remember. will be a test later. Yes. Remember this layout for when we come back. We're only doing the, one other level between it. The, the layout that we're currently just caping over, which makes Listen. it kind of hard to study. It'll make sense. <laughs> just remember that there were Chucks. And they threw fireballs. Or fireballs. <laughs> if Chucks threw fireballs, they'd be even more intense. <laughs> So, a lot, so we talked about levels that have more than five dragon coins, like tubular. This is the level, this is the only level that ruins the entire collect five dragon coins in every level that has five, or that in every level, because this level doesn't have five. It doesn't have six. It doesn't have three. This level has one coin. <laughs> Why did they only put one coin? So, because of that, there's uh, no way to collect five, which means there's no way to despawn the coins in this level. The ultimate decision around that was that the coin in this level would become optional. Actually, I'm going to get peace speed here. 
the coin would become optional and is often referred to as the courtesy coin. The current world record picks up the courtesy coin, so I'm going to pick it up. One lonely coin. For anyone interested in the Lunar Dragon run, Yumario's world record is astonishingly good. He has two, like two mistakes in the entire run, and no death? One death. I don't know, I think it's, yeah, it's deathless. It's deathless, he just gets hit. It's a sight to behold. It's such a good, it's such a good world record. All right, quiz is coming up. <laughs> I hope you all remember those levels we caped over. I need some coins. I don't have enough lives right now. Uh, 76, not enough. All right, fake surprise. What? Gasp. So the way Chocolate Island 2 works is that each sub-area is dictated by something you did in the previous area. The second room is dictated by however many coins you collected in the first room. This area, uh, the next room after this, is determined by the timer. However much time is left on the clock, it has to be below 250 to get this room. Yes, I believe between 250 and 239 or 229. Something like that, because there is like a too low. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one is dictated by how many dragon coins you have. Since we have four, it just gives us that kind of celebratory one with the coin at the end. Chocolate Island 3 has a very hard strat, but we're not going to do it yet. <laughs> first, we're going to cave over the level and get the less useful exit first. That way, if something messes up, I can start select out. How's Super Ryu World doing? Um, it's doing pretty good, actually. We have less than $1,000 to go on that. That's not bad. That's not bad. No. I uh, mentioned it earlier, but I, I watched that run on the plane ride down here, and it is a sight to behold. It's really, really cool. See, I'd like to see it, because I've, I've never seen it before. Oh, it's... There's a, there's a silver P-switch level that I was like in the airport, like, mouth agape, like, holy cow, look at that. All right, so this is the hard strat in this level. There's still more. <laughs> so caping up there is really tough. If you do it wrong, you don't reach the platform and you just fall and die. Good enough. We'll take it. <laughs> and we're good. In the second part, there's a chance that you'll hit the fuzzy and then hit your, hit your head on the, uh, the block there. And if that happens, you die. Yeah. Uh, that level's pretty intense. This is one of two levels that is hard because it's hard at 96 exit. It has no coins. It's just a hard level. Ooh. Well, I almost got through. Pencils. There's a cape at the end of this hallway, so we'll pick that up. But well, we got most of that strat in the first room. All right, Reznor. Don't be rude. Yeah, Chocolate Reznor is always nice. Chocolate Reznor knows that their level's super hard. Would, would you say Chocolate Reznor is sweet? <laughs> Can I kick someone off the couch? <laughs> I didn't make the ice cream joke at Chocolate Secret. You didn't. Oh, well. This level, so similar to, remember when I did that weird overhand thing in Vanilla Dome 1? This one has a similar one. I'm not going to have 
I'm not gonna have to press all four buttons, but I do have to mash. I need to hold run and mash jump. So I have to switch overhand. Oh, I didn't get it. So you're, what you're trying to do there is you want to jump into that gap and maintain the speed from, uh, from moving left to right. That way you can just do like six or seven jumps and get through pretty quickly. What happened to me was I hit the brick before I got above it, so it slowed me down. Here we pick up our last Yoshi. And we actually keep this Yoshi for pretty much the rest of the run. Everyone knew that coin was there, right? I hate threading that needle. So if I do this right, I should drop right in the coin. Chuck. <laughs> that was close. I wasn't not at the coin. <laughs> I was a little further left than I was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. This is another level that's kind of a nail biter. It's got a bunch of de-boost strats in it. To get past that first crusher. enough. Okay, and then we have the Wendy fight itself. Uh, unlike Lemmy, her pipes are all small, which means that she'll show her feet every single time before she pops out. Center. Oop. That's fine. I can get a backup cape real easy. I almost had it. I think I got some time for some donation comments. All right, I have $50 from Misfortune 500. GDQX, eh? What's the X stand for? Excelsior? Actually, it stands for Super Real World 2, 100%. <laughs> we have just over $600 left in order to meet that incentive. I'm so mad that I fell for that. <laughs> we have $250 from Pyrashian. Super Real World 2? Super Real World? What's that? Luckily, it started this level with Cape right here. No big deal. Is this the last underwater level? I think it is. Second like Ghost Ship's kind of cool lore-wise. Uh, lore it's basically a ghost ship from Mario 3 that sank. And it has a, a feature at the end of it that is usually only in Mario 3, and it's only in Super Mario World in this one spot. Oh, shoot. So I want these boo rings to last as long as possible, or these boos, because I'm trying to scroll right and despawn. There's normally a boo ring right here. And since that worked out, I was able to despawn it. And because I despawned it and I did everything earlier in the run correctly, that boo ring just kind of gets out of my way. Now I have to collect these coins without slowing down, which is kind of a pain. <laughs> I have some visual cues, but it ain't easy. There we go. All right. And you all know you want to do it. Orb. Orb. <laughs> Shout out to Link Dead. <laughs> We've reached, by the way, in case you were like, 
uh, maybe I should donate a little bit later. This is the last world. Mm -hmm. We're getting very close to the end of the run now. And if you want to meet that super real world incentive. Please donate for super real world to 100%. So I scrolled the screen at the start there, much like before, to cause the chuck to start running sooner. This level's kind of intense because I have to be careful where I do a, f a normal jump and where I do a duck jump. Whenever I duck jump, it's because I'm trying to save the flight timer for a jump later on. I clipped in the wall there, that was cool. At the end, coming up here, I'm going to do a jump early. Oh, well, there goes that idea. <laughs> so normally what you do there, you do a jump early. I jumped too late, which is what the issue was. Mm -hmm. um, and then, ooh. Now that danger is gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do a jump early and then jump over the pit. That refreshes your flight meter, and you can jump, collect the coin, and then fly right back out without having to do any more jumps. A couple of visual cues to get through this part. And this screen has a hidden cape in it that I can pick up here. And some Yoshi wings. Delicious Yoshi wings. One thing, so this is the other time that we're uh, up in Yoshi heaven. The thing I didn't mention before, you'll notice that Yoshi kind of falls at a certain slow pace when he's got wings out. If you use his tongue, his wings disappear and he actually falls faster. So when I collect this last coin, I want to use his tongue so that his wings disappear and I fall below the screen faster. A speed run with a star and the optimal route. Amazing. Doors. Doors. I think I went too early there. Oh. There we go. Second try. So the normal strat for that, you're supposed to hit a P-switch and then use a coin snake to get up to there. Uh, but we just use Cape because Cape's awesome. Mm -hmm. So this is the other level that is hard because it's hard in 96 exit. It does have Yoshi coins, but they're all in the first room and they're pretty easy to collect. See if I can get this. Oh, I was oh, so close. So close. So I ducked a little bit too long on one of those. Um, if I ducked a little bit less, I could have gotten under that last pencil. Yo, he turned around. What a champion. <laughs> All right, we're just going to wait him out. Yeah, you're cool. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I should pick up a cape. I'm trying to think if I should donate for Super Real World. I think those both sound like good ideas. <laughs> our last cutscene, uh, our last demolition cutscene. <laughs> you, you ever get so mad you punt a castle? Often. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't call it out, but uh, Valley of Bowser One was the last moon we collected. The level after this ghost house is going to be the last set of dragon coins that we collect. Oh. 
trying to think if I should get cape. I don't think anything's that scary. That might have been the worst thing to say. <laughs> that might have been the worst thing to say at a GDQ, yes. So I'm going to try and juggle the shell here. So you spit the shell out and grab it again before it lands. The reason we have to do that is because this level's long enough that if we don't do something like that, Yoshi will swallow the shell. Valley of Bowser 4 is, I believe, the only level in Lunar Dragon that is the exact same both times we do it. Didn't get in there. Well, there was a cape. The tape is... The tape. <laughs> the cape is tempting, but... I can get a faster one later. So right at the end, like you may have even seen on the right there, the the normal exit is right past that key. Do you have any donation comments for the second part here? I do. I have a ten dollar donation from CF55 who left their comment blank for a Super Rio World plug. <laughs> we are actually only $180 away from meeting that incentive. Can absolutely do that. That's, oh, that's very cool. doable. <laughs> Bye, Yoshi. Bye, Yoshi. Yoshi did not land in the lava. He's safe. Mm -hmm. He's just confused. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a little betrayed. Two levels, and then the Bowser fight. That's all we've got left. I don't want to keep that high because the bats might hit me, but I got pretty lucky. Where you at? Hello? <laughs> this is the Crusher. It's my least favorite thing in this entire game. It's just showing off. <laughs> that one actually saved time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first one, well, the first one kind of saved time. In uh, other categories that aren't glitchless, you can actually clip into the sandbar crusher here. It's a two frame trick, it's really hard but it's really, really cool to see. Nice, snuck into the gap, got into the pipe a little bit sooner. Guess what, guys? Did it happen? It happened, we met hey. Superlake Road 100%. I am free. <laughs> Valley Fortress is the hardest fortress. I'm going to have to do a lot of really careful spin flights to get through it. I'm going to try and skip this crusher here. And then all that's left is Dark Room and Bowser himself. I'll try and give you guys the, the visual cues that I use for the Bowser fight. 
I think that was right. Hmm. Wow, this Mecha Koopa doesn't want to get kicked. Whatever, see ya. <laughs> Hopefully I, can, I don't mess it up now. So, you'll notice there's like this foreground area. If we count them off, one, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, uh, three, four, and five are the ones that I'm going to call out here. When Bowser gets to three, I'm gonna jump at five. I'm gonna start running and then jump at five. <laughs> that was so close. When he gets to four this time, I'm gonna run and then jump at five. And then anytime I'm off screen, I let go of everything except jump. Jump is the only thing I'm holding. This time we don't care about the numbers. The numbers don't lie. When he drops the cannonball, we just run and then jump off to the right. When he passes the cannonball, we turn left and drop. When he reaches us, we do a similar jump. And then time will be coming up once Peach appears after I do the, uh, the last hit, which will be one hit and then the hit after that. Once he pushes us away, we're going to jump at five again. When he goes in, we hold right. We get hit because things happen. And... Time. <laughs> That's Lunar Dragon. <laughs> If you enjoyed the run and you're like, hey, I kind of want to see this more in depth or you uh, want to give it a shot yourself, I do have a tutorial series on YouTube, just Lunar Dragon Tutorial. If you search that, you can find it. Um, it will run through more specifics of how to do each, each strat. Um, I want to, is it all right if I do a couple shout outs? I'd like to shout out Link Dead and you Mario. They really pushed the, the category to its limits in the past couple years. Uh, I want to do shout outs to my 1036 crew back home. And then the, the Mistum, the community, which Huffin's a part of. Uh, they supported me for a long time. I promised them at the start of the year that we'd get world record in this category. I don't have that yet, <laughs> but we got to run it at a GDQ. We raised a bunch of money. I think that's just as good. That's it for me. I don't have anything else. <laughs> awesome job on that run, Miss Dokken. Uh, of course, while you were in that Bowser fight, we got a $15 donation from your rock band friends, in fact, which say, who say, you rock, Mr. Ken. We also have an anonymous $10 donation, uh, which says, enjoying the great run here. Shout out to Hupfin and Score Bunny on the couch. I'm going to get to a few of your other donations, uh, which will not be about Super Ryu World to 100%. We'll be saving those for later. We have $180 from Urza MTG, as promised for 36 swags. We have $50 from Morgan 170. What an awesome charity. Good luck to the runners and keep up the good work. We have $50 from Flus177. Glad to see you all hard at work for the Able Gamers charity. It's payday, all. Here's a little I can pass forward. See you at the finish line. We have $25 from Marlborough Man. Greetings from Germany. Best game, best run, best event.
We have an anonymous $50 donation with no comment. Silence. We have $25 from Harlan Sinclair. Grew up with some gamers who would have appreciated Able Gamers, so really happy to support such a great cause. Awesome event, great to watch. And if Michael and Chris are watching, yes, I know I should be studying for law school exams. Good luck to all the runners. We have $25 from Excessor Gantuin. I didn't even realize there was a GQ happening until a friend mentioned it. Donating towards piano accompaniment for Zelda 2 and because those dice bags look great. And I would like to take a quick moment to mention that Games Done, Chris, Games Done Quick Express 2019 is powered by Twitch. For those of you attending TwitchCon this weekend, visit us in room 6D on the second floor next to Twitch Rivals. Our marathon space will be open to spectators 24 hours, including overnight and throughout TwitchCon weekend. And that is going to do it for me at the host mic for today. I will be back tomorrow, and in the meantime, I will hand it off to the next host. Why, hello everyone, and welcome back to Games Done Quick Express. My name is Sakura Subasa, and I'll be with you for the next few runs here. We have a $50 donation from Braylon that says, I need more Mario speedrunning. Thanks for another awesome event and cause. Keep it up, GDQ. And looks like we are ready for our interview here, so let's uh, send it on over to Scent. Okay, okay, I don't I don't see him. But I can show you guys some prizes. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes people need to eat. <laughs> so that's where scent is right now. But I have some awesome prizes to show you guys. Uh, we have some amazing stuff coming up that um, I'm just gonna say right now are all uh, available to win um, if you donate now through the end of the Zelda 2 run coming up tonight. So. Make sure you get those donations in. We've got these awesome, uh, these are dice bags. These are super cool Legend of Zelda chain mail dice bags. And they all have little Triforces on them. So I was um, kind of messing with these because they're really just like very pleasing. <laughs> just like very pleasing to mess with. And it seems like they would be really uh, cute and fun little storage. I even have um, found a little, there's like a little... <laughs> thing in here. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at Sonic Advance. No way. <laughs> but yeah, they have these awesome colors. We've got like uh, the black and red here. We have this pretty silver and purple, which is really nice. And then we have the classic, more very Zelda-esque uh, green and gold. So this is a $20 minimum donation. And these are um, supplied by the Chain Nerd. So thank you so much for that. 
and they're really nice. Like, honestly, they're just really fun to just kind of like <laughs> to play with. They're really pretty. Uh, we also have this awesome mouse pad. This is a top secret area mouse pad. Um, now, this is a $5 minimum donation. This is from Studio Pen Pen. And again, all of these prizes, uh, if you donate now until the end of the Zelda 2 run, you can win one of these awesome prizes. So this is really cool. We've got um, just a nice classic Mario world scene. And, uh, I, you know, I noticed that Mario's making a very, like, longing expression here. So, you know, donate so that you can check that out up close for yourself. But it seems like it's a really nice quality Nice and uh, sturdy and um, like well printed and it's really nice. So make sure you get donations in for that. And then we have whoop, this awesome Necrodancer blacklight poster. Uh, I actually was looking at it and then they were like, yeah, it's a blacklight poster. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> It's really beautiful. This is a $10 minimum donation. This is from Fan Gamer. So uh, you can see like I, the color scheme is really lovely and it's just really, really cool, really great design. Um, so this is something that I would totally put in my house. So you guys should donate so you can do that too. I think it's really nice. And then uh, I also wanna make sure that I mention, of course, you got the grand prize, which is a um, custom um, Spyro, designed a Nintendo Switch. This is a $50 minimum donation. This is now through the end of the marathon. So this is our big grand prize. Uh, I've actually been able to kind of open it up and look at it a little bit, and it's really pretty. It's very, very well done. It's got the beautiful purple Spyro colors, and uh, I believe there is a picture um, on the site for it. I have seen a picture of it. I do know that that exists somewhere. So uh, make sure that you guys get in your donations for this. Again, this is a $50 minimum donation now through the end of the marathon. So overall, you know, now through Zelda 2, there's some really awesome prizes that you can grab uh, and get your donations in for that are all really kind of really fun to play with. <laughs> so um, hopefully Scent can get some food and, uh, and then show you guys some more prizes a little later on. But thanks so much. Let's throw it back up. We have a $123.45 donation from David Pittman that says, did someone say Super Ryu World 2? Thanks for everything you do, GDQ. I'm glad to support a good cause in Able Gamers. And just a reminder that GDQ is powered by Twitch. And with that, we're gonna be playing a quick Twitch ad. And welcome back again to Games Done Quick Express. Games Done Quick Express 2019 is powered by Twitch. For those of you attending TwitchCon this weekend, please visit us in room 6D on the second floor next to Twitch Rivals. Our marathon space will be open to spectators 24 hours, including overnight through TwitchCon weekend. 
We have a $50 donation from Corporate Vandal that says, can't wait to see Ryu crush this hack. And if you guys are looking for an incentive to donate to, we have a Cadence of Hyrule double time incentive that's coming up right after this run. The incentive is for $3,000. We're currently sitting at 735, so we need to get some donations in for that in order to meet that incentive before the next run. You got about, probably about 40 minutes or so. We have an, an anonymous $50 donation that says, my husband and I really love watching GDQ events. Here's to a great cause. Thanks for everything you guys do. Well, thank you, Anonymous, for that $50 donation.